trial of labor leader Harry Bridges, longest in the history of the San Francisco federal court, draws to its close. Defense lawyers give the jury the case after 81 stormy days of trial in which the prosecution climaxes the government's 10-year battle to deport the Australian-born labor leader. The verdict hinges on the jury's decision as to whether he was ever a communist. The jury, out five days, tells Judge Harris that Bridges was a communist and that he had lied under oath when he swore he was not to gain American citizenship. Bridges announces he'll appeal. Why it matters whether he was a communist might be seen in many parts of the world. In Paris, for instance, where 1,500 red-led demonstrators, well aware that disunity can promote only communist ends, mass along the Champs-Élysées to protest newspaper publication of a Nazi's memoirs. Suddenly, violence flares and police close in, swinging nightsticks and loaded capes. Scores are hurt as French Reds inflame partisan passions for their own ends. In Yugoslavia, Marshal Tito appeals to other partisan passions as he campaigns for his own particular brand of communist dictatorship as opposed to dictator Stalin's communism. He appeals to 80,000 in the Dalmatian city of Split for support in this Cold War within a Cold War. A victory dance precedes the voting, for the outcome is a foregone conclusion in a nation where only one party is listed. When the ballots are counted, Tito's party piles up its expected 95% approval. No victory for democracy, it aids the West nonetheless, for it is a victory for the anti-Soviet communists. In Prague, the pro-Soviet communists win a victory as easy as Tito's convicting Papal Nuncio de Leva of anti-state activity. His expulsion ends a danger grave to all red states, free speech. Unlike the cities of one-party Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia, Berlin is divided into communist and anti-communist zones. Here, the tensions of the Cold War become real as the red-trained youth organization tries to crash the western zonal borders. First, it's a war of words. Then, of voices. Finally, of clubs. With the Reds planning a major march on Western Berlin in May, these demonstrations preview troubles to come in a city the Cold War graphically divides. The Cold War's impact on the West crystallizes in Holland where the defense ministers and staff chiefs of 11 Atlantic Pact nations, among them Lewis Johnson, America's defense secretary, meet to plan a unified defense against possible communist aggression. Says Secretary Johnson, We'll get on with the urgent business that the free peoples of the Western world have entrusted to us here as its representatives. <coughs> Let's do it well. Let us work, I pray you, for strength and through strength for peace. For we believe that peace through strength is the best guarantee for the protection of our freedom and our beloved ways of life. From Paris comes spring styles as pretty as a picture, like this portrait of the 20s come to life. Balmain's short dance frock with oval décolletage could have stepped right out of the picture frame. In contrast to the gowns of the boyish 20s is a tulle evening dress with strapless bosom and billowing full skirt. This, also by Balenciaga, you've got to see to believe. Jeweled pantalettes cover the knees of this short in front dress. Now, in the mood of his native Spain, Balenciaga embroiders a strapless top and headscarf in gold and silver sequins. 400 yards of ruffles make up this breathtaking dress designed by Dior. With gowns like these around, even the statue thinks it's a masquerade ball.
action you crave, take a look at the Washington Boys Club Junior Golden Gloves. In the 55-pound class, Dynamite Tom Davis trades punches with walloping Paul Lakey. These pennyweight pugilists never stop swinging. A seat at ringside is the draftiest place in the nation's capital. The wind blows Davis over, and Lakey wins the title. Now Ronnie Sams meets Jim Schwab. These diminutive Dempseys weigh only 60 pounds apiece, but there's a punch to every pound. The vast crowd cheers the winner. He's roundhouse Ronnie Sams. Here come the heavyweights. 85 pounders Buddy Fontana and Eddie Valencia make those punches land where they count. Fry sluggers display big time fighting courage as Fontana dumps Valencia to win. Below lies Diamond Head, fabulous landmark of a fabulous American city, Honolulu. This modern metropolis on the island of Oahu is the capital of the U.S. territory of Hawaii, which may become America's 49th state. Aloha Tower welcomes arriving tourists. Honolulu's Waikiki Beach is one of the most famous anywhere, while Bishop Street is a thriving business center. A sign points the way to the rest of the world, but who'd want to leave? This is the University of Hawaii, and in the midst of civic buildings, once the palaces of kings, stands a statue of King Kamehameha, conqueror of the islands. Honolulu, crossroads of the Pacific, one of the cities that makes America great. Thank you.